Okay, so we're doing a show on uh, Saturday night, which I didn't mean to do. I was just testing the system. And all of a sudden, um, uh, uh, I get a call from Josh. So I start talking to him. And then I hadn't started recording this at all so that I have a recording of it. And uh, the fa Facebook recording is never as good. So I'm uh, now starting to record it. So we should just start all over again. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Do you want to sing with me, or uh, <laughs> uh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, live from the most infected city in America. It's the Ramble with Alex Bennett. We're going till about, I don't know, maybe five minutes from right now. I have no idea when we're going to. Anyway, now now we had an official opening there, see? So, there you go. You know, what the hell. So, um, uh, uh, oh, oh, look, you got your mask. That isn't, that isn't, that's a fake mask. It's a piece of paper. Is it? Hey, it works. It works, yeah. Uh, Marjorie went out and for a long walk down by the river uh, and uh, with a friend of hers, and uh, she said everybody was keeping their social distance, and most people had on their masks, you know. And there was a there was a uh, there was a book called Love in the Time of Cholera. And so I was thinking of maybe entitling uh, doing a new show called Love in the Time of Corona. <laughs> You know. Loving the time of COVID. Yeah, yeah. By the way, right now, for everybody, this is the best time to have sex. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and you're asking why, and I'm telling you by personal experience that sex is much better in, um, in times like this. And because I found out when we had the earthquake in San Francisco, my girlfriend was there, and we had just we had broken up a, while, a, while, a couple of weeks earlier, but she had come over and we suddenly got in the middle of this massive earthquake that happened. And that night, we had the best sex we ever had. And I called it, I titled it, and I called it, and we can call it that even in this situation, a rubble fuck. <laughs> um, for some reason, when all this danger is in the air, the sex is better. And I, I asked some psychologist about it, and he said it's a kind of primal thing that you want to preserve your bloodline. And so in times of great stress, you have a tendency to want to have sex. And when you have that sex, it's some of the best sex you'll ever have. So anybody want to rubble fuck? So now's the time to do it. That means the uh, maternity wards will be packed in December, right? Yeah, well, I could say, you know, it's, it, now's the time to do it. But you've got about 20, 30 weeks, so don't worry. We're yeah, not coming out. Time. We're not coming out that that soon, folks. You can schedule it into uh, January. President has no concept of how long this will last, you know. And my answer is, I don't think anytime soon, you know. Well, you know what? You know what's interesting? I was just watching the news a little bit ago, and they were uh, they were. Uh, in San Francisco, it's SF General, which is now Zuckerberg General, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, they only have 19 cases active in the hospital. Really? Only 19. And the nurses were feeling guilty oh. because of all the, mm -hmm. you know, everything else going on in Louisiana and New York. And they, they were actually going to send some, some of the, you know, medical staff to New York and Louisiana just to help out. So because is it the same way at other hospitals in the San Francisco Bay Area, or is it just that? I, I one? think I think so. I think it's pretty pretty calm out here. Mm -hmm. um, I know locally here, our hospitals like uh, I could throw a rock at it, and it, there's nothing going on at our hospital. Oh. Wow, you know, it's, yeah. we're you know we're way out in the boonies, but there's nothing at our hospital. I mean, we've got seven active. The the, the count is increased in the county, but. Um, I know they caught, they got some Santa Cruz has got a couple of active in Monterey County. has got a few more active mm -hmm. down there. Um, 
but they're the most they're the most uh, that that have got they they actually cut seven people from Fremont that drove to Santa Cruz and they were hanging out in front of Seven uh, Eleven in Santa Cruz, and they busted them all and gave them thousand dollar fines. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Wow! They saw them. They showed them all lined up in front of Seven Eleven on the curve. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, but you're still uh, in the Bay Area. You've still got this stay in place order, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, and you know, the thing is, some, he, you know, know, I'll have to give him credit. He did crack down early, and it seems to be working. Yeah, but the thing is, if they lighten up on it, they can't. They, it would just all of a sudden, you know, it takes one or two people, and that's it. You're yeah. off to the races. And I boom, think boom, uh, boom. L.A. has already said they're going to the 15th of May already. The, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we, we don't have any hard and fast rule here, and there is a $1,000 fine, I think, for wa- for walking too close to somebody else. I don't think there's any fine for being out of your house, okay? Uh, yeah, that's just the, the, the co-mingling type rule. There, Santa Cruz actually has a commercial on TV, and the chief of police is on the, it's almost like Gestapo-like, <laughs> but it's a PSA. And he's saying, if you're out and you're too close to somebody, we're going to find you. And if you're out messing around and you're not doing essential things, we're going to give you a ticket and send you home. Well, you know, uh, New Yorkers have been pretty good about this, you know. And we, I think we're killing the virus, all right? I think we're stomping it out. Yes, we had a lot of deaths again today, but all these deaths that we're having now are flowing in from weeks ago. Yeah, a couple okay. weeks ago when they all but went yet, in the hospital. Yet there are less people being admitted to the hospital than ever before. The curve is down. The curve of in- intubations is down precipitously. So we can expect to see that death rate take a turn the other way around. But the problem is we can't sit here and um, and and suddenly feel that uh, uh, we're we're fine, you know, and get complacent, uh, you yeah. get complacent because if we get complacent, uh, we're off to the races again. Now, the question is, let's say we start having very few deaths and we start having no new cases and or very few new cases. And we have very few admittances to the hospitals for this. Let's say all that happens. Let's say it happens a month from now. The question is, do we immediately say, okay, everybody go back to what you were doing? I don't think we can. I think we've got to keep our foot on the pedal till it's we just see nothing, zero, nada. You know, but but everybody is anxious to get back to work. The president wants to get the economy going again because he's got an election coming up. I mean, the worst thing we're facing right now, if Donald Trump isn't bad enough, it's bad enough to have him running this country in the time of this kind of crisis with a looming election on the horizon, you know? Yeah. And, and and that's very dangerous because then I think that man is going to be, uh, as he has his whole life, acting out of his own personal expediency rather than the good of the country. So what have you. By the way, All if right. anybody wants to call GabNet Live is our Skype uh, uh, ID. It's very simple. GabNet Live, J-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V. Well, look, it's on the screen, idiot. There it is. <laughs> Gabnet Live. So I have a question. Yeah. I know that you would probably know the answer to this. Uh, can you get the Apple TV on like the Roku or whatever? And do you have to have all the other Apple account and all that other shit? Or can you just like get the Apple TV without having to have all like you know, if you don't have the iPhone and all that other... No, you don't have to have all their other stuff, but you do have to have an Apple account. Okay. That you go through. Um, and, I, and, so, and then you, you can get it on, like... You don't have to have, like, Apple devices to watch or anything, of course, right? So you can no, get it on, no. like, a Roku right, or whatever? Right, it, it works completely independently, but it is going to ask you to create an account at Apple so you have an Apple ID and password uh, yeah. so that you can activate all the stuff on your... On your on your Apple yeah. TV now on Roku, uh, you don't have to do anything really except maybe you want to give them a credit card or something in case you ever want to buy 
uh, a uh, a channel or something like that on there. Right, right. But yeah, and, I mean, and, I and, and, and I, I, I mean, see, we have you know a smart yeah. TV or two, and of course Netflix and Amazon and yeah. Vudu and on and on. And I of course you have, have GabNet and GabNet TV, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We just I just don't have Apple TV, but uh, only reason I was asking is. Uh, Tom Hanks and Spielberg did those two miniseries, uh, Band of Brothers and The Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've ever seen them. Yeah, was it called The Pacific, the second one? I guess yeah, it was. Yeah, it was called The, the, the Pacific, yeah. yeah. And they were both based on uh, books written by uh, Stephen Ambrose, mm -hmm. um, a, a historian. And then he died uh, while writing The Pacific, the book version, and mm -hmm. his son, Hugh Ambrose, finished it. And then they made it into a miniseries, too. And there was always originally supposed to be a third installment of that. It was meant to be a trilogy, and it was all going to be by HBO. And it was supposed to cover the air war. And then people have been waiting forever and ever and ever. And HBO finally backed out of the deal um, because of money. I think they ended up spending so much money on Game of Thrones, actually that they, they backed out because they were very expensive to make. And Apple TV picked it up, and it's finally going to get done, and it's apparently been in, been actually worked on for well, quite some time, well, and it's going to come out if you, apparently yeah. sometime next year. If you want the Apple TV programs, not the Apple TV device, right? you can get that independently on Roku. Well, that, that's, what, that's yeah. what I was talking about. So oh, okay. I thought you could. I just... I mean, I literally was just reading an article about it yeah, they'll, they'll right want, before they, I called you, if so you, I, I just if talked, you, if, I if, thought if, about it. They, well, if you want to, you can then subscribe to Apple TV. It'll yeah. ask you to, and then you subscribe to it, and you give them a name, and you give them, you give them a credit card so that they can put it on right. the credit card and whatever. Yeah, I was just checking. And, it's just uh, yeah. the... Uh, or, uh, or, I mean, or, or, wait a minute, you could go out like I did. I went out and I bought my... Uh, what, did I, what did I buy? Um... No, is it Apple TV that I have? Uh, no, yes, it's Apple TV. I went out and what did I buy? I bought, I think it was when I bought the uh, uh, Apple Watch. Or, or no, when I bought the new iPhone. I bought my new iPhone. They gave me a year of Apple TV for free. Oh, yeah. So go out and yeah, buy. I don't, I don't, go, go I don't do anything else, Apple, because I, really I really don't care for them. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you know, I... They're going to have the rights to it, so you don't really have any choice. And then, I don't know if they'll release it on DVD. Uh, I suspect they will, but I don't know. They might not. I mean, that you know, uh, there's actually a decent chance they won't. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. I, I know. I mean, I've waited for a long time for the third installment. A lot of other people have, but I guess HBO just, you know, those things are terribly expensive to make, from yeah. my understanding. Yeah. Of, I, I think I read somewhere one time that the Pacific costs like. Two hundred and twenty million dollars, or some craziness like wow. that, and that was in two thousand and ten. So, yeah, I mean that's goddamn, that's expensive as hell. So, uh, but apparently they spent way more than that making Game of Thrones or something like that. So, they must be in the poorhouse after all that. I don't know. So you and Kevin and Patrick on on Saturday nights get together and and uh, do your own little show behind my back, huh? I mean. Huh. What, I don't know if I call it a show. <laughs> but, I mean, you call each other, then you just sit around and, and bullshit for a couple hours, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you can't leave the fucking house now, so you don't have anything else to do. Well, it's... Uh, but, yeah, that is what we do. Uh, not every Saturday, but, you know, especially since I'm not working nights anymore, and I basically have every Saturday night off guaranteed, uh, unless some sort of emergency were to come up, uh, it's, it's easier to plan that out. Maybe every other or something like that. Patrick and I have been doing that for years and years and years, but uh, Kevin talked to us, what, two weeks ago or something like that, I think, for a yeah. couple, three hours? Yeah. Wow. Well, Talk about whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid shit. Mowing your grass. Whatever. You know. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Seen any good movies lately? Had any good dinners at a restaurant lately? Uh... More or less. Yeah. I, I mean, kind of there's less to talk about now because there's less things you're doing that you can talk about, you know? So Yeah, just work. That's all you're allowed to do. I figure, I've said this before, I figure the movie theaters are dead after this. 
I, I, unless they want to change their seating. <laughs> you well, know? you know what I thought? <clears throat> I thought the big investment nowadays would be a drive-in movie now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually you know? surprised that that didn't make like some kind of a, a well, maybe it will, some kind of a comeback or whatever. I mean, I don't really know why it went out of style. Well, you got I, you got these know, people but... with all these big sound systems in their cars. You'd think yeah. that, you know, they could broadcast it locally. Mm-hmm. And these people with the nice sound systems in their cars, they could have surround sound and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Project it up onto a side of a building or something. But some of the some of the actual uh uh, cinemas like in the malls because mm-hmm. the malls are closed they right. did that they uh, projected the movie on the side of the building and cars came up and parked in the parking lots and they broadcast it over a local station and you know they parked 50 cars or whatever and charged them to watch the movie on the side of a building right. well I'll in tell you you know it might come back the, dri- yeah. the drive in yeah, that's what I meant. Because then you can go in your own car. Yeah, that's not, what I'm talking about. You won't be able to go to the snack bar, though, because that would be too crowded. Yeah, right? but, you know, that's what I'm talking but about. But maybe they know? can come and deliver the popcorn and sodas and stuff to your car. Yeah. Let's all invest yeah, in that, it. that's I, probably I, what they would do. I think we should invest in a drive-in. What do you say? I'm good. Huh? That's what I was trying to talk my sister into doing. Yeah. My, well, yeah, I mean. Well, I he can... needs a piece of land to... I used, don't even I used to, to run the speakers or nothing. I used to work at a drive-in. I used to work at the Marin Motor Movies. <laughs> and uh, it's now a mall. Uh, and uh, I, I worked at the Marin Motor Movies, and uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was interesting, to say the least. Uh, we used to have what they would call these, uh, every now and then they would, you ever remember they used to have, collections for like the Will Rogers Hospital and things like that and they would pass the bucket around the theater and you you'd have to put <laughs> you'd have to put some money in the bucket because you look like a jerk if you didn't yeah. because somebody's sitting next to you watching you well at a drive-in theater they made us go to each of the cars okay yeah and and ask them and it's fine if you are in the first couple of rows right all the families are in the first, though, 20, row, 10, 20 rows or something. Well, they sent me all the way to the back. <laughs> and the only thing that people are doing in the back are screwing their brains out in the cars. Yeah. I would go up to a car, and if I saw that there were two bare feet up against the, the window, <laughs> you know, I, I would... Put your own dollar in and keep walking? I would go, never mind... Sometimes they were steamed up, but you know, t- I would knock on the window, go Will Rogers Hospital, and fuck you, get out of here. You, know. <laughs> you just ruined my load. You know, I mean, um, uh, so, I, but I, uh, that was quite the thing. I worked there for a while now that I think about it, you know. And, I, and then we had have the all night movies where they would, they would run movies all night, D- dust to dawn, that's what we called them. And we just run about 10 movies throughout the yeah. night. And uh, the beginning of the night, you know, you worked the snack bar, girl would come in, I'll have two um, uh, milk duds, please, boxes of milk duds. Okay, here you go. Okay. And then she'd come in like about an, two hours later and she's, she's a little, hair's a little tousled. I'll have uh, two sodas, please. She'd come in two hours later. Now her, her bra's falling out of her. <laughs> I mean, by the time we got to four o'clock in the morning, she, she was just a mess. Okay. Worked. Yeah. So. Yeah, we yeah. had one down near us in Burlingame too. Yeah. So that was my life at the Marin Motor Movies. <laughs> the big thing was to stuff as many people in, and you know, put them in the trunk and everything else. And that cough you hear is uh, allergies. Cancer. No. 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 Corona. <laughs> corona. No. Uh, uh, I'm telling you the truth, folks. It, it, the um, uh, what do you call it? pollen count today? So the pollen count goes up to 12, 11.4. Oh, Jesus. And wow. man, I can feel it in my chest. I can feel it in my throat. You know, I can feel it in my. Uh, my eyes aren't burning as bad as they were yesterday. I think we're down one tenth of a point or something. Or it's shifted from maple to something else, you know. 
uh, that I'm not as allergic to. But uh, that cough you heard was just a little bit of the tightness of my chest from that. But you worry about that because with the coronavirus, you know, you can have some of those symptoms. The only thing is I don't have a temperature. So, yeah. That's good. yeah every time you cough, you think you got the shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think you can get it if you don't leave the house. Okay. I think you're pretty yeah. pretty safe. It, it doesn't come crawling, so, right. huh? Yeah, you would think not. It doesn't come crawling in under the transom or climbing up eight stories I mean, to come. Unless get someone you. leaves your house and you know comes back or whatever. But yeah, I mean, if, well, I if worry you stay about. In, you I, okay? I I put gloves on when I go out because I'm touching. You know, I'm hit, hit, hitting the button on elevators and you know I'm uh, opening doors and things like that. And uh, so you, I, I think you got to have the gloves. Most people don't have the gloves. They just do the, uh, the face mask. And then I come home, and we just do everything to disinfect ourselves. You know, or washing our hands, singing happy birthday to you twice. And um, first I wash my hands with the gloves on so they get clean. Then I take the gloves off. Then I clean my hands. And then uh, we, Marjorie and I both, when we do, take our clothes off and put them in the washer-dryer, Okay, and go take a shower. Yeah. It's too much trouble to go out. So today I thought, <laughs> she went out for a walk, and I went, maybe I should do the same thing. And I went, no, I'm going to have to come home. I'm going to have to wash my gloves. I'm going to have to wash my hands. I'm going to have to take my clothes off and put them in the washer. Then I'm going to go have to take a shower. And, and quite frankly, the best thing about the coronavirus thing and being forced to stay indoors, no showers. I don't have to shower. I just There's no reason. <laughs> And I haven't shaven, you know. I, I was suggesting that everybody who's in, indoors on this and can't leave, just grow a beard. It's something to do. You don't have to go to work and look snazzy for people. You know, just look, just become a total slob. There you go. Yeah. Um, now you don't, I you, already started. Yeah, you don't leave the house much, do you, Kevin? No, as a matter of fact, I went to the, uh, I, I had to make trips to get water and the hardware store and I had to go to the lumber store because I was doing some stuff from making some displays for my wife. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make one trip to all three places. And <clears throat> I, I, you know, you go out, you go out now and I just feel weird now going out. Mm -hmm. And the other day, I went out Friday and I thought, okay, I guess it was Thursday. I, I went out and, and I didn't want to wait in line. So I go to Ace mm -hmm. and there was a line to get in there. So I said, screw that. And then I go to this water store that I go to and they weren't open for some reason. I thought they'd be an essential place and they weren't open. Mm -hmm. So, and they had a, a line at the water thing in the window. So I thought, screw that. Yeah. And by the time I got, to going over to the lumber yard, I thought, you know, this just ain't worth it. I'm just going back home. Right. And so the next day, I went back out and I went to the Ace and they had a line. So I said, screw it. And then I, <laughs> I went over to the water store and there was nobody there. So I just went up and got my water. I got my 15 gallons of water. And then I went over to the lumber yard and the guy over there. So it's an old style lumber yard. So it, it's like going to the old butcher store. Yeah. And I, you know, talked to John there and he got me my lumber and stuff. And that was good. And then I waited to go to the ACE till about, you know, 15 minutes before they closed and there was nobody there. So I shot over there later that night, but it's just weird going out now. What so. is it like in the stores? Cause I haven't been in any stores. Do they have knees guards up now in front of all the cashiers? Yeah. I mean, and even over at the lumber yard, they, they put a, he put up a plexiglass thing, and he's an older guy, and he's gone through cancer and everything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, he's an old oaky, and you know he he doesn't go along with this stuff. But he had to put up a you know a, a board, you know, of two by fours and a, and a and a splash guard, like a salad bar type thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, sneeze guard. And so he's you know, and then when he took my credit card, he wouldn't touch it. He you know stuck the thing out there and said push in the credit card and he says i don't want to exchange no cooties you know just uh, do you want me to sign for you? he says nope we'll just pretend this was on the phone and he says okay and i said that's fine you know i don't yeah. want to mess you up john you know because he was sick he's an older guy 
Well, you yeah, know, I, I here, here's what I'm... One of those guys out to get the lumber, and we were good. Here's one of the things I'm worried about, uh, and I, I think it's a very real worry, is that uh, I have uh, spent a lot of copay money on my cancer operations. Uh Put out somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe three grand or something for ver- for coinsurance. I mean, the total amount has come to over a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> All right. Oh, gee. So uh, I I don't want to get coronavirus, and the reason I don't want to get the coronavirus is I went to this much trouble to get better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't want to suddenly say, you know, we went through that whole thing and all of a sudden here I am being intubated. OK. And, e- even you know, if it's free, <laughs> even if it's free, you know, I, I just I just, it just, you know, uh, bothered me. So anyway, so I, I'm I, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little uh, tight in the chest from the uh, allergies. But you worry about it. Every little cough you get, every little ache, every little pain. And uh, you go, oh, I got it. That's not good, you know. Uh, uh, do I have it, you know? Um, and I haven't left the house, so you know, the only one that could bring it in is Marjorie, and she doesn't leave that much. I mean, we, I, I, this, it's starting, it's starting to take its toll on me, just being here. But it, it's going to take my toll, a toll on me worse if I go out, you know. So. I don't know. We, you know, it's like you, you guys are don't live in the kind of place that I live, where the population is so dense that going out is bad. In your case, you know, living where you live, Kevin, or where you're living, um, Josh, uh, you guys can actually get in the car, go somewhere, you know, go out to a go out to a forest somewhere and walk around. Nothing's going to get you in the forest. There's not going to be any, you know, coronavirus there. Um, and um, you know, it's it's it's. Uh, uh, but I don't have that here. You know, yeah. I go out to Central Park, sure, but there may be people who don't know about the social distancing that well, or aren't wearing a face mask, or whatever. So I'm putting myself in a, you know, I can't go out to some place that's just like, can't, I can't drive to the mountain like I used to at the top of Mount Tamalpais and just go hang out there because there's yeah. not going to be any coronavirus up there. I'm sorry. You yeah. know, uh, I don't have that. So we're, we're, in really, the city. we're really stuck in the house. And the only decent thing about me being stuck in the house in the apartment is it's such a huge apartment that... You know, I don't feel the cabin fever in quite the same way other people do, but I'm starting to get it anyway. Yeah. You, know. uh, well, and, you don't have a choice. You don't and, have a choice yeah. to go out if you want. And, and it's going to be this way for quite a while to come. And, uh, you know, I'm, I had that operation, so I think I, I maybe am a little more prone to getting the infection than other people because I've got the radiation going on inside with these seeds. I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't been able to talk to my doctor to ask him what, you know, how it helps or how it ru- what it does to my immunity. So uh, yeah. I don't want to take the chance and go out, you know. And I might be scared to go out when they say oh, it's all clear. So. Yeah. Hmm? We'll see. What, what are we I think it'll be like... Hmm? Uh, I don't know. I think it'll be like when Prohibition ended, you know. <laughs> uh, I mean, everyone hasn't been able to sit down and eat in a restaurant for months and months and months. I think the first day they'll be packed or whatever. But I, I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't. Uh, I, I, so, don't I don't know about don't, that. You know, I mean, uh, 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 let's say tomorrow they say, you know, we've, we've here, here, uh, best case scenario, we have a cure. Right. Okay. So now... I guess it's ollie ollie oxen free, right? You know, if I get sick, I go to the hospital, they give me a shot, and I go home. All right. Are you still gonna Are you still gonna go to a movie theater and sit next to somebody? You know. Yeah. You know, you're gonna go to a restaurant and be jam packed in to have dinner. You've also gotten used to a new paradigm. Yeah. You know, your habits have been forced to change. Well, that's what I was thinking about is I got season tickets to the Niners, and am I going to go sit in a big stadium? I, I still want to go, mm-hmm. but shit, I don't, you know. 
Well, are they going it, it's a question what they're going to do like tonight uh, and it's an outdoor stadium i'm probably going to stop well. this thing in a little bit but uh, uh <clears throat> what happened is that um tonight they're doing saturday night live yeah i want to see that they, I, well i want to see what they're how they're doing it you know um right. and uh it, it, a lot of these uh it, i want to see how long it takes them to go <laughs> <laughs> yes to pull that up well hold on to that because that's going to be a collector's item someday <laughs> uh, you can print them down on it's the going CDC to be a collector's rep. item in about three years when we're still all sequestered in our homes <laughs> and it'll say three thousand days <laughs> yeah you add a zero to the end of it yeah, yeah uh, i mean i hmm? i already kind of kept my distance from people anyway because i don't really like people and yeah. you know, I'm the same way I, I mean I, like I'm, I'm saying you know I mean like like I'm a season ticket holder in Cincinnati and I go to all the games but I just have my single ticket my wife doesn't go with me or anything and I mean I, I don't like rub myself up against people or anything you know I mean I mean no. I just I stand there in my little spot and uh, I don't even sit in my seat there's actually a spot I just stand I, I, I lean against the rail yeah. And I watch the game, and and even if you want to rub up against people, the know? Me Too movement will have something to say about that. So you know, right. you're in trouble either way. So, I mean, I mean, you know, that's just like I do the same thing with the baseball games that I go to. I have a seat up top that I never sit in because I stand out in center field under the stacks and lean over that rail and watch the game and have my fucking drink and you know people milling around or whatever but i mean i don't like go rubbing their face with my hands and letting them you know I don't lick anybody or anything <laughs> so, well, well yeah i would probably do that if i was younger and i could walk around but i gotta go sit down i can't go roaming around because i used to do that but yeah. i have a seat and i gotta you know my seats on the in a certain spot i fought for the seat over the years yeah. And I got it, and it's on the edge, and I got drunks walking by me, and people, you know, hanging all over the place, and I don't, I don't necessarily like the seat, yeah. so I'm always trying to get handicapped seats, and they move me around, mm -hmm. but you know, if I get stuck in my seat, eh, shit, you know, it, you know, people always spilling beer and shit on me, and it's like Jesus Christ. Well, I'm, I'm... yeah, they they can get the some of those games can get. Uh, a little out of hand. Football's yeah, a, and then, football. then people come up to me and they, you know, they're going, "Oh, you're an old man. You know, you how many years you've been coming to this game? You get the fuck out of here." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't leave the house for much. I mean, I'll leave to go to the games, and I mean, I, you know, honestly, if it weren't for that, I'm a stay-at-home person anyway. But uh, yeah, those games are definitely full of people who I, I, I mean, I don't really know what they think but they must think that you want to talk to them like everyone wants to talk and sometimes it's just like I, i'm not one of those people you know like yeah. like you said get the fuck away from me man you know i mean especially when it's people from the opposing team you yeah. know and they just want to make conversation like yeah. pre-game or whatever and it's like I, I i really don't want to talk to you yeah matter of fact i'd like to see you cry like a little bitch later today you know what i mean like i hope we fucking beat your fucking ass and you go home and you fucking cry the whole way you know <laughs> like you know get away from me man <laughs> but i mean yeah uh, i don't know what the fuck they're gonna do about all that i mean they're talking about playing baseball pretty soon but without crowds so yeah i, I don't i don't know i guess i get my money back or whatever Actually, they'll, they'll just credit it in the next year's. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Never That's give fine. Your money back. Playing right. baseball Never. without a crowd, or playing football without a crowd. It's how's how's odd. that? How's that going to affect the? Forget about the fans. How's that going to affect the players? It's going to be really. You know, strange. because they're used to getting juiced up. You know, yeah. the people yeah. cheering and so on and so forth. Although I've asked some football players over the years. Uh, you know, because I, as someone who doesn't even know how the game is played, always have a lot of questions to ask. And one of them I asked, I can't remember who I asked, somebody very famous, I can't even remember who he is now. And I said, when you're standing out there in the field and you're doing something, you're running or whatever, and the crowd is cheering like crazy, do you hear it? And he said, no. He said, I, it's just I'm, I'm too psyched on the game and what I'm doing and what I have to right. do. And that sound is always there, so you kind of become used to it as 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 a part of the atmosphere. 
Yeah. So I'm wondering what's going to happen when that atmosphere no longer exists. I mean, it's silent out there. Are they going to be able to play the same kind of game? Uh, I don't know. There are parts of it that they do feed off that, too. Huh? There are parts of the game when they do feed off that crowd. Yeah. I mean, I guess it just remains to be seen, you know? I mean, it's like saying we're going to hold a comedy show, but we're not going to have any audience. I mean the com- yeah. Yeah, I mean I watched Bill Maher tonight and he does his monologue and they put in a false soundtrack and they show a, a picture of a fake audience laughing and so on but I find he's having a hard time with it because he's used to getting that audience laugh and being able to get his timing uh, uh, yeah. you know right. set to that and he seemed to be having a hard time with it on the other hand John Oliver doesn't seem to be having a problem he just seem, they don't even put a laugh track on it. He seems to just know how to do it, um, which I, because he had a lot of time, I think, doing set pieces out on the road for The Daily Show years ago, and he knows how to work without an audience. <clears throat> Marr, who's always been a comic, doesn't know how to work without an audience. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it's difficult. And so I'm just wondering how that's going if, to, if they're going to play the baseball games, and, and when they play the baseball games, what you can't tag someone out, you know, <laughs> with the uh, ball. Yeah, I mean they're uh, they're gonna have. You're right. They're no, they're still gonna do that stuff. It's just, uh, you know, I think a lot of what they've been talking about and their delay is, like with MLB, they've been talking about starting the season, or they've actually been talking about playing the entire season mm-hmm. in the spring training locations of Florida and Arizona, mm-hmm. and not having people going all around the country. Send all the teams in Arizona back to Arizona. Send all the teams that go to Florida to Florida and just have them play each other. And then the World Series this year will just be the winner of the Cactus League and the winner of the Grapefruit League, yeah. if you will. And then when you're in Florida and when you're in Arizona and you go park to park to park, you don't have to take all these flights and all that. It's just like the parks in Arizona are all within, like, my understanding is, like, you can be at any one park and get to any other park in, like, 30 minutes. Yeah, It's all, yeah, all simple them. drives. And then... They've been talking about just sequestering the players out there at the facilities mm-hmm. and testing all of them on a regular. I think the main thing they're waiting on is to just get this huge stockpile of tests so that they can test players like all the time. Yeah, but, but you're, you're yeah. going to, I said this last night, once the tests come out, it's going to be fine. But let's say you have a, oh, a, a job you go to and the person who has the, is the head of the office, everybody who's there has to have the test and see yeah. that nobody tests positive, okay? And that's fine. But are, aren't you going to have to test him again the next day? Because you don't know where he's gone or where he's, he's, he's been. Yeah, you know? so, I don't know so, how so, so, that, really. Yeah, I so, mean, so testing would have to go on. You walk in the door every morning, they swab your nose, and you sit down in the lobby for 15 minutes, and then they say, okay, you can go to work now. But they'd right. have to do it every day. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. I mean... That's just one of the things they've talked about was just playing the entire season out in Arizona and Florida and just kind of not having the traditional divisions and and American and National League and all that, just having it divided up like that. I mean, that's going to be kind of strange. And then a lot of other stuff. Did you hear about the MMA League, what what they're doing? Uh, the mixed martial arts guy, who, whoever yeah. that, whatever they call it, what do they call it? Uh, I, I think that's what it's called, and I don't watch it, but I think that's what it is. It, yeah, it's it, got it, canned. It, it, it's called, well, here's what, here's what they're doing. The guy who owns the, the whole thing, the whole rigmarole, uh, is going to hold some matches on television here. But what he's decided to do, because most of his best martial arts people are not here they're in other countries so he's buying an island and he's going to fly them into the island and they're going to do it there uh and um uh, that way he can get all these guys from all these other countries to be able to be playing but he he's either buying the island or renting renting the island something like that so hmm. well i don't know i, I mean I, I hope they what's that I thought that got canned. Really? There was supposed to be some kind of fight, I think, here. That... They were going to try and do it right here in the Central Valley, and I know that got canned, but 
And got, I thought yeah. the uh, the um, the island idea got shit canned too. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about that. I don't know because I don't really I don't really follow that at all, other than the stuff that crops up with it that's like in the news that you can't avoid hearing. But yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do with all that. I mean, I I hope they start playing baseball soon, but I mean. That's like I was saying all week, though. You know, I mean, they're going to run into some trouble pretty soon because if you take everything away from everybody except work, <laughs> you know, after a while, this shit's going to get really old. Yeah, you better yeah. start doing something. You better start playing baseball or you better start something. I mean, people are going to have to have something here before, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, they're just going to start looking that, around. I, I'm getting tired of trying to find things on television to watch. Well, right, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, it's like you, you got people working that have to work for, you know, $50,000 a year, and you got fucking ball players getting paid not to work, you know? People just, no. you know, like we can't have anything in life right now. I mean, they, they closed the national parks, for goodness sakes, you know? I mean, like that's what I'm saying. You can't even go drive around in a national park or anything. Right? I mean, you can't do anything. Yeah. So... And I understand why. I mean, I'm not saying it was wrong to do all that stuff. I'm just saying, man, after a while, it's like you got to give us some form of life, you know? <laughs> just, well, I mean, what's, yeah, yeah, what's yeah. not worth living? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, why go on, you know? But I don't know. It's just hopefully they start something here pretty soon. I mean, I know the NFL is going to have their draft in two weeks. I mean,. Heck, it's not even two. Yeah, is it two weeks? How are Less they, they going to pull that one off? Yeah, 24th or 25th, something like that. They're having like a, they're going to have a fucking draft virtual. They're not going to go all to one place this, this year. They're going to have a draft, you know, and all the teams are going to call in on like a fucking Zoom app or whatever like that they used shit. to do, yeah, back on the phones. Yeah, and just call in their fucking draft pick, and it's going to be on television, but not everyone will be in the same place. Wow. wow. So, I mean, you know, the NFL, they're not going to stop for anything. So, I, I, I assume they're hoping this shit's cleared up by September when they start, but problem is they don't uh, start I, in September. I, I, they start I'm, training I'm, camp I'm, in July. I'm, so. I'm not seeing that. I mean, the question is, when do we go, you know, like they, in China, they send everybody back. Yeah, everybody can go to anywhere they want to, and all the markets are open, and, and you can go everywhere and do everything. They even did it in Hunan, you know, and all of a sudden, yeah. it's starting to come back. So the question is, okay, at what point do you say all clear that we know this is going to be fine, and what it's going to take, to be honest with you, is a cure. Something that they can give you yeah. that will, when you get it, it's still going to be a lousy flu, but it's not going to kill you, you know? And uh, I don't think that's coming anytime soon. You know? and yeah, yeah I, see, I'm that's, not sure either. Right. That's what I picture with, with Trump. He's talking about, you know, a big celebration and coming back with a big thing. And if you looked at what Wuhan did, they had, you know, the light, the buildings all lit up. Mm -hmm. And they had a big capture what's going to happen, and it ain't going to happen that way. Yeah, you can't. Right? Can you see New York, New York opening that way? There's no well, way. Well, I mean, it, we're going to be very careful about it because we're seeing what's happening there and in Korea. The same problem is happening. All of a sudden, it's coming back because yeah. they relax things, and um, you know, who knows? Who knows? You can flip the switch off, but putting it back, turning it back on, isn't the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, I just, you know, uh, I, 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 I just am planning that I'm going to be staying inside for a long time to come, you know, and, uh, that it's, it, it, out there it's dangerous, you know, out there it's a, it's a, it's a Petri dish. Uh, it sucks because I can't even go see my mother. Yeah. She's in a, assist, you know, she's in a old folks apartment building. Yeah. And they won't even let us in. Yeah, well, is, is it, they haven't had no problems in it, right? They haven't had any problems at all. Okay, well, then they're safe if they stay there. Yeah, they're yeah. doing it right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a friend of mine, a friend of ours, whose husband had to go into a, uh, into a not a hospice, but a uh, assisted living facility because of medical problems and so on. And uh, she can't go see him. Yeah. You know, she has to talk to him on... Uh, 
uh, on Skype or on, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, well, that's the other problem is I, you know, I've tried like hell to get my mother tech, you know, at least learn how to use Skype and stuff like that. I bought her a laptop and the whole bit, and she just well, fights the it. easiest thing for you to do is if she has an iPhone or an iPhone. Product. Nope. It is, nope. Uh, oh, Flip oh. phone, and she won't even use that. Oh, boy. <laughs> Has she ever met uh, Larry Bubbles Brown? Uh, uh, Bubbles is uh, Bubbles is Bill Gates compared to my mom. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> I pay for a phone every month for her, and she is, I look at the bill every month, and it's zero, zero, zero. Well, I, I'm thinking that Bubbles, if he ever did become tech savvy, would feel that he was giving up a good comedy bit. So you know, you know, I, I've offered him phones. I have I have old phones here. He can have one of them. I have yeah. one that's not too old, and it's one. It has most of the stuff on it. I, it has a large screen and everything. Yeah. And he, uh, uh, I said, all you have to do is just check in and see which service you want, and then I'll send you this phone, and they can set it up for you. And he. He, he just hasn't done it yet. My mother fell and laid in the hallway for two hours at midnight and and laid there with a broken arm and shoulder. And she still won't let me buy her a damn button. You mean one of those things you just press? Yeah. You know, I've fallen and I can't get up. Wow. Wow. And she was in the post-acute care for almost Boy, three that, months. That's, wow. that's yeah, well. Uh, and I, I try mean, to shit, tell her. I, I could use one of those fucking things. I'd use that. <laughs> you know, bl- I mean, bl- I use that right now. <laughs> right. Bless mom. She's like, you know. Uh, yep, I love her. Yeah. Oh, but, geez, almighty. Well, I'm out of beer and I can't get up. Yeah. yeah go get me one. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> I'm in the park. Go get me a beer. Beep. Oh, man. Mm. Oh, well. Let me take my allergy medicine here. That's stuff. Doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> it's just I start getting this, you know, <clears throat> heavy breathing from the uh, from the coronavirus, folks. There you go. I'm a dead man. Listen, you know, my age, uh, I I I'm scared shitless about this. If I were if I were younger, I wouldn't be scared shitless. I can't remember who said it. Uh, somebody, some politician said i think it was maybe the florida uh, governor said well you know he says uh, uh i'm not too worried about young people because nobody under 21 has died of the coronavirus i'm sorry to tell them there have been five people who have died under the age yeah, of 21 I was say, uh, and one of them was maybe, two years old maybe at the, at the time that he said it it was true or no something, he but... said it last week Oh, well, that's you, then he's just not well informed. Well, because, of course, he's a moron. Look at what he then did. Then he goes and opens up all the churches. Yes. And I've, yes. And I've heard numerous stories of definitely people in their 30s mm-hmm. dying. I mean, 35, 38. I mean, you know, not super young, but, you know, not elderly or any, you know what I mean? Just middle aged. I mean, yeah. you know, dying and had no other health conditions. You know, um, whatsoever. Well, I I, I don't have a lot of the comorbidities. I mean, I do have a little bit of asthma Um, uh, when I I had when I was a kid, and it's kind of here when it's a heavy day like this, I start getting heavy in the chest. But outside of that, my health is in pretty good shape. I mean, outside of the fact that I've got these radioactive seeds in my prostate, and I don't know how that compromises me or doesn't compromise me. so I'm just, you know, because at 80 years of age, I feel like uh, God has a bullet to my head, you know, uh, and I'm not going to not going to let him pull the trigger. So, uh, uh, you know, ah, well, I'll probably be dead in about 10 years anyway. So, you know, well, I, I mean, uh, no one can know what would happen if they were to contract the virus. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I feel like I would be okay probably but how do i how do i i don't know well, that. I, I mean, how, was, how does anyone yeah. know that i mean I well, don't they had a that. they had a 84 year old guy come out of the hospital fought it the other night the last night yeah. he came right. out of it. and like i said then i read an article about a guy who was 35 years old he was dead in like four days how, so yeah how old, was, how old was the guy you were talking about kevin 84 i believe 84 yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, they rolled I, them out I, of the hospital. I'll tell you last what, night. there are a lot of comorbidities, and one of them that I see when I when they say, "Oh, and then we lost uh, Grandpa," and they show a picture of Grandpa, and he's fat. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, well, and, 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 and please excuse me, Kevin, because I know you're on the heavier side. But I think uh, every time I see these people, they, I say, well, uh, let's see, I'm listening to the television, but I'm not watching it. And they say, and so and so, it was a, a it worked for the subways, and he's dead. And then I look at the picture. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are certain health factors. I mean, they say, why are blacks getting it? They're actually, you know who's getting it the most in New York? Hispanics. They yeah. are thirty-five percent of the deaths, I think, here. Um, wow. But why blacks and uh, Hispanics and so on? And it has a lot to do with, I think, with uh, their their general health and and uh, the reasons why they don't go to doctors and the reasons why they have the jobs like working in the subway or you know something like that that's going to get them you know. As opposed to whites who have uh, some of the higher jobs, who go to the doctors a lot, and and so on. Plus, I got to tell you, I live here in Harlem. Obesity is a major illness among blacks, you know. And I don't know why black organizations didn't get together and say, "We got to really work on this," you know. Uh, grandma can't get that fat. Uh, because yeah. that's what they're dying from. They go there and they, 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 you know, they couldn't breathe when they went in, even when they didn't have the virus. Uh -huh. You uh -huh. know, uh, and uh, I, it, so that's that's the uh, that's the problem. But listen, uh, I'm getting. I want to take some time out here before Saturday Night Live, but this has been thoroughly enjoyable. I'm yeah. glad you guys. I'm glad Josh called. I'm glad he called you, Kevin, and said get on the pipe and uh, we could uh, sit here and just talk without being interrupted you know yeah um so nobody yelled nobody yelled <laughs> my blood pressure is very nice and even right now you know it's not feeling terrible you know what can i say anyway uh thank you so much guys i really appreciate it we're going to stop recording this right now, and I'll talk to them some more right after we say goodbye to all of you. I'm not even going to do my standard sign-off. Just, just stay safe, okay, everybody? All right. You too. Bye-bye. Have a good rest of the weekend.